This is my new rolling clamp car. It's got all my shorter clamps on one side and on the other side, all my pipe clamps. The design is not mine. It comes from Norm Abrams, who you will most likely know from his appearances on Freakazoid. Uh, and then later on, he was able to get his own show, uh, New Yankee Workshop. Let me show you how I built it. The material, the whole thing's gonna be made out of plywood. I'm gonna use 18 millimeter plywood, uh, this pine plywood CD, no, BC, sorry. You could use three quarter inch if you're in America. Uh, the rest of the world, 17, 18, 18, 19 millimeter plywood's all gonna be fine in terms of structural strength for it. It doesn't need to be a hardwood plywood. In this sort of size, pine's gonna be fine. You could use uh, two by fours or 90 by 45 or whatever it is in your country construction grade pine. There's no necessary downside to that uh, and may go together a little bit easier if you've got sort of the right tooling. I'll get into that in a little, a little moment. Cost wise for me it came to about the same price either way. Plywood's a little bit nicer to work with and gave me a few opportunities to make it look nicer than perhaps pine would for the same amount of effort. So on to tooling. This can all be done with a circular saw and a guide whether it's a full guide like that or like a side edge ripping guide type thing. I'm gonna use a track saw because I actually don't have a regular circular saw. So I've got this, it'll help me break down the sheet. Uh, I'll then rip stuff on the table saw, probably cut my angles on the miter saw. Though again, the angles don't really matter that much so long as they're the same. So if you just used your circular saw to cut it or even a jigsaw, it would probably work out just as well. Again, I've got these tools, so I'm gonna use them. I'm using a track saw. As I said, I don't have a circular saw. They're nice because they're accurate and they've got good dust collection. Other than that, they cut things straight. Not much different from a circular saw. For the joinery, it's just gonna be screwed, nailed, and glued together. One of the tools I don't have for this project, which actually would be ideal for it, is a pocket hole jig, particularly for the side pieces. Uh, they're gonna be difficult to clamp because of the angles. And a pocket hole jig takes care of that. Still glue it, but the screws hold it in place and you don't need clamps. Oh, and don't forget, there's nothing more important than these safety glasses. As I've still not bought a second track, for rips longer than 1600 millimeters, I have to stop, move the track and continue the cut. The result was actually pretty close to perfect though. Alternatively, I could have cut it on the table saw, but at those dimensions it was still pretty heavy and I really didn't want to. I forgot to turn on the microphone. Here I'm ripping down the 1800mm piece into strips of 100. These will form the vertical pieces of the rack. For whatever reason, this piece ended up binding. You can see the outer layers are cross grain and it's wider than it is long, so probably some wood movement given how hot it was that day. No matter, cut it halfway, flip, cut the rest of the way. The rest of the piece was fine when ripping though. With all the pieces ripped to width, it was just a matter of cutting them at the miter saw. This could be done with a hand saw, jigsaw, circular saw, or even at the table saw. But given the long pieces were 1800 millimeters long, a miter saw just makes it so dang easy. First, a five degree cut on both ends of the uprights, then 90 degrees for the cross members that the clamps all hang from. The lower support is angled on both ends. The shorter support is too, but I angled one side, then took it over to the frame to describe exactly what length it needed to be. So this is where having a pocket hole jig would come in handy. The way that Norm did it was build the faces first and more of the square box then 
uh, pocket hole in these stretcher pieces, I suppose, that go from side to side. Uh, and that works fine because the pocket holes pull it together while the glue dries. So what I'm going to do instead is glue up the sides, which I can more easily do without the faces attached to it. So a little bit slower construction, but it's hot today, so it gives me a good excuse to go inside. For now, I'm just screwing on the slats that the clamps will hang from. I'm not 100% certain on the best location for them. I do have some more clamps due for delivery soon. After a few weeks when I decide, I'll undo the screws and put some glue underneath and re-screw them on. The base of the clamps receive two dados that the uprights will slot into. Then it was just a matter of fitting the rack into the dados, drilling some holes for screws, undoing it all to add glue, then using the screws as clamps. While it was on its side, I added some casters. These are piddly little 50mm casters, and I'll be replacing them with the same type I used on my sharpening station. These just happen to be what I had on hand. While the glue was still wet, I flipped it up and started loading on clamps. The weight combined with screws seemed like a good way to clamp it while the glue dried. So I'm really happy with this. These are very convenient to get to uh, being taller. Everything is actually at a better height. All the lower stuff was a bit too low. I mean, I've got a good space for a bucket of spring clamps down the bottom. Uh, the only complaint is that it's probably got a little bit of racking. Uh, so if you've got good ideas on how to solve that, let me know. I will probably take all the clamps off today or tomorrow and put a coat of varnish on it. I've got some polycrylic sitting there and I'll do a whole bunch of workshop fixtures uh, all in the same finish. I know a lot of people don't necessarily finish workshop fixtures, but it is a good idea just from the ease of cleaning. Once timber of any sort gets um, dust on it, it can be difficult to remove, particularly the longer it sits there and sort of grinds away. So putting a coat of polycrylic on it will make it much easier to clean and that's all I'm after rather than toughening it up and having a long enduring finish. I just want to be able to blow it with an air compressor a lot easier. I don't have any plans available for this. Uh, honestly, you don't really need it. It's pretty simple. I don't feel like I should publish them anyway. Uh, you can buy them from the New Yankee Workshop. Though they're not digital plans, meaning you'd have to get them delivered. Uh, and if you're in Australia, you're looking at about $20 US for a delivery, I think it was. So all up the plans will end up costing about $40 Australian, which is more than half the cost. Anyway, thanks for watching.